Should we touch just ever so briefly on the genius of Dominic Cruz and what Uriah Faber's looking at in this fight? Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's a, a well, I mean, you know, Dominic Cruz changed changed as a human being after that first fight. That that amount of guillotine in the WEC changed him as a person and, and he, he just he put Uriah Faber to one side in comparison to everybody else in the division. And I think Dominic Cruz well, his his career wouldn't have been the same without Uriah Faber's existence and I think vice versa. But Dominic Cruz's the growth in his game I think has been down to Uriah Faber. I think he's tailored his footwork to deal with Uriah Faber from the first fight. You know, if you watch that first fight, he was very stagnant. He was very still on his feet. He wasn't nearly as, as mobile as he is now. And, and, he, and Uriah Faber generally initiated most of the combinations. I mean, it was only a 90-second fight, but the, Uriah Faber was, was leading that fight, in my opinion, because he was he was standing his ground and he was starting the combinations. He was striking first. So I think I think Dominic Cruz has, has adapted so much over the years. And, and I've, I've not seen the same thing with Uriah Faber. I think it's going to be, a, you know, I mean... It's gonna be like a Run DMC music video, watching him dance around for, for, for as long as it takes. But I, I mean, we all stand in awe watching Dominic Cruz fight, and, and uh, you know, I think we're all the same in that boat. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to you fighting again because you, the and the analysis that Dom did during that time that he had off absolutely changed the fight, the way that he fights, not only the way that he f learns within the fight, but just all of that absorption of the moments of fighting and the, and the chaos of fighting and making the chaos like less chaotic. I'm really excited to see you fight again. But uh, this one's interesting to me. When Uriah Faber started, he was improvisational and in innovative. He, did, he was a wrestler who, in the open field, did crazy things that you couldn't anticipate. Over time, he became a guy with a great uh, overhand right to a left hook, level change off of his striking to work his wrestling, and he became really, really good at the ABCs of MMA, maybe better than, than almost anybody in his weight class, and then added that tenacity and that inability to be stopped to it. But then Dom, like you said, created a game almost to answer that. Now we all find ourselves, if you're a bantamweight or somebody else, and with all of these people in this movement movement, needing to find an answer to Dominic Cruz. And that answer is so rarely, whether it was wrestling or jujitsu or whatever in the early building block phases, the answer is so rarely just get as good at them at that thing. Yeah. Because Dom is six, seven years ahead of you, you can't. So we need to find an answer to that that doesn't involve just getting to be as good a wrestler as the wrestler to stop a wrestler, or getting to be just as good as at, at boxing to stop the boxer. We need to find a new answer. And I don't know that that blueprint is out there. No, it's not. You know, I think, I mean, the person that we all thought was gonna be closest was TJ Dillashaw. Mm -hmm. And TJ Dillashaw was, he, it was almost like he, he'd taken what Uriah Faber was good at and made it more like Dominic Cruz. You know, but it still wasn't enough. It still wasn't the right answer. And and to me, Dillashaw almost seemed like the upgraded version of Uriah Faber. I always like to like to uh, similarize these guys with chess pieces and and their different movement patterns. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at Uriah Faber, he's a very straightforward, straight back kind of guy. He that that sprint chaos that he that he creates is what produces a lot of the finishes in his in his fights. It's it, it, it creates windows for him to find those finishes, to find that choke or that clean punch or whatever it is. Whereas Dominic Cruz, is, you know, his, his footwork is entirely different. And if you look at him in comparison to the first fight, he was very much a pawn. I mean, you know, one forward, one back, you know, not even back as a pawn, but just basic, basic movement, you know, whereas Dominic Cruz now is much more, I mean, his footwork's adapting, he's much more like the Queen, he can kind of go wherever he likes, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's so difficult to keep up with a guy like that, especially when your footwork is as limited as Uriah Faber is. You know, Uriah Faber's fast, he's got good lateral movement when he's not attacking. He's got good lateral movement when he's moving away defensively, but he can't he can't put the, put the two together. And I think that that is where... If, if he'd have had a better relationship with with, uh, um, with Dwayne Ludwig, I think that would have been the element he would have added to his game. Yeah, I agree. It's, um, you know, you and I have talked before about sort of intangibles and how you can't 
rely on winning a fight because you're really game or because you're tenacious or you're fearless or you're tough. That should be that last element when everything is really close. But you feel like this one, although Uriah is incredibly skilled, it is Dominic who is the skill fighter. And Uriah has to win will versus skill. And that can be done, but you can't count on it. And that's what makes this a tough fight for Uriah Faber, I think. Yeah, I think so. Although, you know, if I was if I was Uriah Faber and I would sit down and watch that that second fight that they had, I would see a lot of good things that he did. You know, I mean, he dropped on a couple of times cleanly with that overhand right, and it is a, it is a, a a case of timing. You know, if he can get that timing down of Dominic Cruz and be confident enough to throw, you know, the, when you're fighting a guy like Dominic Cruz, kind of similar to when you're fighting a guy like Wonder Boy Thompson, you throw so many times and miss that it gets to that stage where you start hesitating before you throw. And when you start hesitating, that's when you start getting hit yourself. You know, Michael Bisping against Luke Rockhold in the first one, he started to hesitate in his, in his own combination because he was missing. And that's, that's the issue that Uriah Faber's got to overcome with Dominic Cruz. If he looks at those shots that he did land that were good and thinks to himself, if I can double my output and land four or five more of those punches, that might be the fight right there. So it's not like he can't win. It's not like he doesn't have the tools to, but it's, he has less chance of controlling the whole fight, in my opinion. And that takes it. That takes the win more likely into Dominic Cruz's column. Well, thank you, Dan. And we're going to do a couple more of these. Uh, you mentioned Wonder Boy Thompson. You ju you just set it up perfectly. That'll be our next one. But uh, thank you so much, brother. I really love uh, chatting with you. I love talking fights with you. And just keep up the great work, man. Thank you, my friend. Good talking to you.